Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Ibble South by Southwest Expert Panel Showcase Event Extraordinaire. It's one of those titles in there. Uh, it's your old pal, Sean. I'm hanging out with my new pal, Brant Cooper. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, man, the sun is out. South by is back. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know, it's been ages since I've been to South by, so it's really good to be back. How, how, how long? I think... I want to say 2014. Wow, welcome back. Thanks, man. Good where, to be here. Well, uh, where are you coming from? And what, and where, uh, what headspace are you in? Are you drinking water? Are you, you staying <laughs> hydrated? Are you feeling good? <laughs> Probably underhydrated. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here from San Diego, California. Oh, man. So I think uh, there's sort of an Austin, San Diego uh, thing San going Diego. on there. It's Maybe throw place. in Seattle there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, you know, I released a new book back in November called Disruption Proof. And so that's sort of where my headspace is at is really not – you know, startup disruption is great, yeah. but what's crazy is like, you know, holy crap, is the disruptions happening to our lives? Is this going to come to a stop, right? Oh, we yeah. get over the pandemic, we got war, and we just got one thing after one another, thing after another yeah. right? So I guess the premise is, is that of the book is that this is the new normal. Got it. So we're just in chaos. We're right? just so. we're in chaos. We're going through this yeah. massive transformation from the industrial age into the digital age, yeah. and the whole structure of those systems is completely different. And so, uh, you know, young people are lucky that they get to come up in this new age, but they, boy, they got to fight all of the old people holding on to the guard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's fundamentally, I just think the institutions that we depend on are managed and structured like we're in the middle of the industrial age, like the 50s, and we're producing microwave ovens, as opposed to uh, where we re really are, which is in this hyper-connected, you know, information and disinformation mo moving at the speed of light. So how do we deal with that? How do we manage that? How do we build businesses in that? That's, that's, wow, those are good questions. So obviously you're tackling that during South by here and you're tackling that in life. And so if someone's come in, let's say I start up a, a company and I'm trying to find our way, our footing right now with everything that's going on, what are some easy practical tips that I don't get lost in the shuffle? I don't get lost in the information. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think that the, so I did a talk yesterday and basically the, the, the title of the talk was I don't know. And, and what it really means is like the, the middle of the industrial age was all about I don't know. And you're standing – or is about I know. And right. you're standing at the top and you're commanding yeah. control and hierarchy and you're making all the decisions. Yeah. But the 20, 21st century, it's really about admitting what you don't know. Sure. And once you admit that you don't know something, you actually open up this whole world of creativity and inspiration and all of the smart people that you surround yourself with. You can actually go and solve problems. And that's why we hire smart people is to solve right. problems. Right. So I think for people starting a business – it's to think about, well, what is that new leadership? Do I have to be the one with all the answers? Or can I actually lead people by depending upon the intelligence and the creativity of the people that I surround myself with? I like that. And so then that gets into actually how you structure your company, like the actual very organization of the company. And it's how you, you delegate your authority to teams of people to go solve problems. And so I imagine these future companies, which re are really organized around a uh, hierarchy of missions, like sure. a cascading missions, um, as opposed to operations, marketing, product management, engineering, yeah. sales, yeah. operations, yeah. HR. Like all so of that on, function so just on. doesn't make it doesn't make sense anymore. And so, yeah. so brave entrepreneurs are going to be the ones that go like, well, what's what actually makes sense yeah. in how I structure my company? No, I, I think that's really well said, and the freedom to know that you don't have to be the guy with all the answers in the room. That's that's quite liberating, and I think it's something that. You're, you're right. We were saddled with before, and kind of this false bravado. And and I think that once you do away with that, it kind of empowers the people around you. It does, and it also creates trust. I imagine. Yeah. Like, All right. And and again, sort of in a in a remote distributed world, yeah. trust is like one of the biggest elements, right? Totally. I mean, I think that the reason why the big corps are freaking out is because managers can't see their people working. Sure. Right? So it's like, no, you got to be on Zoom eight hours a day so I can see that you're wow. working. Yeah. So it's like, ah, bring them back into the office. But what's the reality of them really being in the office? The reality of them really being in the office is the manager is still in meetings all day. Yeah. And they look out and they see their person in the cube. Right. And they go like, oh, I'm good. You know, they're, they're at work. Yeah. But what the person, that person in the cube isn't right. doing anything. They're probably less productive than if they were at yeah. home able to juggle all of the things that, that people have to juggle at home. So, Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting seeing why you feel like companies have such a hard time evolving their thinking. Well, I think because all of the leaders that are there now got there based upon successfully executing. Got it. Right? So they, they, they determined that they did know, and then they built that out, and they were able to achieve successes. Yeah. 
And so then, you know, the rug kind of gets pulled out from underneath them, and suddenly you've got sure. a new world that you're living in, and that old way doesn't work. And so I, I don't really think we invest time in teaching leaders new skills. Yeah. Like, uh, I love Brene Brown, Dare to Lead's a great book. Huge fan. And so a lot of that is going on in the corporates, yeah. but it's really difficult, I think, to tie those changes, that mentality, yeah. that into the day-to-day -day management of yeah. my people. So I think that's really where the trick is. And I think they can be, I think they can change, or at least a, a good majority of them. Hopefully, right. But the other part of it will simply be as, as sort of generations and older people retire, new people who Just I think sort of have that ethos a little bit more yeah. are, going to, are going to be exercising those new skills. Yeah, yeah. It's, are you, do you think higher ed is reflecting that? Do you think that's coming from people working, I don't know, picking up uh, more online accreditations? I know like Google, Apple, creating their own. Where, where do you see people really ushering a new age? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually ran a, a conference back in, I think it was August, which I called the Endless Disruption Conference and had some people there from education. Yeah. And so there's uh, an organization called New Tech Org, which is basically teaching high school kids how to act or work in a in an agile fashion. Sure. I mean, I don't know if your audience Almost is like familiar with agile, but it's yeah. like it's a team oriented approach to learning. Yeah. Like everything is project based. Sure. And so what these people are learning how to collaborate and how to tackle challenges together and how to brainstorm and all of these things. And so that to me is teaching these kids how to be in the 21st century. The rest of academia is really structured around producing people that follow orders, right? Yep. So it's a very, again, yep. it goes right back. I'm training you to be in an industrial age Learning company. what to think, not how to think. Right. So it's like standing at the front of the room, listen to what I do. do I have to say, you know, teacher one person, students 450. It's a real Not a lot of interaction. And a matter of yeah. fact, all of these people think that they disrupt innovation by putting that video online. So like my daughter's in college and these professors are just phoning it in by saying like, yeah, just go watch these videos. Right. And no, no discussion and yeah. no intellectual engagement. Right. So a lot of academia is still producing, trying to produce people to live yeah. in a 20th century work environment. I, I, I completely agree. And I think that there's very much a listen to what I've accomplished, not so much let's, let's work through this together. And right. let's figure out, like, I, I'm, not, I'm probably missing something. I probably have blind spots. Totally. You have something to offer. Let's put that together. Let's see where we go. Yeah, and I think that is definitely something that's hopefully growing in with the next generation. Yeah. I think millennials and Gen Z have really, especially Gen Z, seems very eager to learn. Do you have optimism for the future? I, I do. I mean, I have two daughters, 21, yeah. 23. So, and, you know, they've, they're, to me, younger people are growing up more empowered than they have right. been in the past. And so they're, all right, so they get my genes, you know, partly for me. So they're going to reject sort of the old school, probably, you know. Yeah. But, but I think people are willing to challenge. I think... Uh, I think women uh, are are way more powerful than they used to just by just by the generational changes and that they demand to to be you know equal totally. and it, and sort of the assumption is among a lot of people is that they are equal in the younger generations and the same thing with people of color and so I think that this 21st century demands diversity it's yeah. not even like 100%. just it's not just the ethical thing to do, which of course it is the ethical thing to do. It's in our bones. It's, like, it's not only in our bones, but it's in the like the interconnectedness yeah. and the complexity of the world demands diverse viewpoints. Yeah. The way you're going to solve problems is by bringing people with different mindsets together, totally. different backgrounds, different totally. cultures. That's actually what's going to save the future, yeah. in my opinion. So yeah. that part, I think, is optimistic. And South by Southwest, I think, reflects that. I think a lot of the conference topics and a lot of things that are going on is about accepting people and in, in diversity and in, totally. inclusivity and all of these things. And I think that is laying the groundwork for the future corporation who just, in order to survive, they're have, gonna have to do it. Right, right. God, Brent, I could, I could talk to you for a long time, <laughs> but for the sake of the medium, I, I think we gotta probably keep it a little bit short here, but I, I do wanna uh, ask you this. What is an easy way for people to get connected and, and become more disruption proof? Uh, how can people follow you, all that? Final, final yeah, final. sure. I'm Brant Cooper on all social media. Maybe Brant Cooper official on a couple, a uh, couple. But uh, Brant to Brant Cooper is my email address. I actually okay. respond to absolutely everybody. I love the conversations, uh, and so I encourage people to reach out and, and continue the conversation. I think that um, just sort of the call to action is is for individuals to realize that they can contribute to this. And if you go into any institution, it could be your church, it could be a labor union, it could be a nonprofit, it could be a startup. 
and just start exercising this exploration, uh, which is a, this native ability that human beings have to, to go and seek answers rather than to pretend that we have them. Yeah. So it just really starts with, okay. just starts with I don't know. That's, I, honestly, I think that's probably one of the wisest things I've heard all day. So I really do thanks. appreciate that. Brand, thanks for taking time to be here. Thanks for sharing with the Ible community. Uh, Disruption Proof, check him out. Brand Cooper, uh, you're a good man. Appreciate hey, your man, time. Thanks for having you me. You bet. Yep. Absolutely. Thanks, guys.